all month long, we have been focusing on Mental Health Awareness Month. And today we're gonna to continue that conversation by really talking and delving into trauma, how to identify it and how to cope with it. Here to help us do that is Dr. Luming Lee, the Chief Medical Officer of the Harris Center for Mental Health. Thank you so much, doctor, for being here with us. Yeah, absolutely happy to be here. So we really wanna, you know, for folks that are watching is continue this conversation and really explain um, what exactly is trauma. And you and I were just chatting a little yeah. bit that it, it can be so different mm -hmm. um, and different responses for different people. Right, yeah, in trauma, what can happen is there's very visible identification for physical trauma. So if you get a gunshot wound or mm -hmm. if you're in a car accident, you might have physical implications. And the psychological and the emotional aspects of trauma can vary in different individuals. And so you might experience something out of the norm, such as a car accident, but that response can vary across people, across time, across settings. Yeah, and so what should people look for? Maybe parents should look for or even, you know, an individual for any symptoms and signs of trauma? Yeah, there is a lot of different kinds of symptoms. And so there's a category of physical symptoms where individuals are having hyperventilation, they are uh, having trouble with breathing, they have sweaty yeah. palms. Um, on the psychological side, individuals can struggle with essentially, um, you know, trying to stay home. They might want to um, just not go to work or not go to school because mm -hmm. they're worried about that event happening to them again. So yeah. for example, in the car accident, somebody might say, I don't want to get behind the wheel. Right. I, I want to just stay home. I don't even want to look at cars yeah. because what if, what if that hits me? Um, and then there's more, um, you know, challenging types of psychological responses, and that might include things like flashbacks. They have very vivid um, re-experiencing of that event that took place, yeah. as well as um, struggling with um, just being worried excessively or other types of um, experiences. And when and when you know anyone is going through that. Um, there, there is help, there is treatment. There's, mm -hmm. there's lots of ways because I, maybe in that moment too that some people may think, I, I am so terrified, mm -hmm. there's no way that I could ever, you know, get in a car again or get on right. a plane again or anything, right? Yeah. But there are ways to, to, to cope and to maybe not heal right. from trauma, but kind of, you know, deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. There's plenty of different kinds of treatments out there, including medication treatment, as well as therapy treatments for trauma and the experience of ongoing trauma, which can be diagnosed in mental health terms as post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. um, for those individuals that are experiencing symptoms, first of all, it's really important to just identify those symptoms that, hey, this is a little out of character for me. I don't normally go and sort of have anger outbursts mm -hmm. or um, avoiding social settings or avoiding uh, experiences. This is really not me, I need yeah. help. And once you start to identify that, um, being able to connect with others about, hey, like, did I perceive what took place in this experience? Um, you know, what, what can I do about that? Um, there's learning about what trauma can do to individuals. And then there's also seeking more mental health help from professionals. And and talk, talk about the importance of maybe identifying trauma early, mm -hmm. the earlier the better. Right, absolutely. Um, for some individuals, the symptoms start right away. Mm -hmm. This experience was very um, troubling, it was stressful, it was very intense. Um, that can happen. And for some others, their um, mental health and sort of their brain actually will try to suppress this. Okay. And so just saying, hey, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, mm -hmm after something that has been pretty traumatic by definition um, can be a body response. And so we, we call that repression of that particular memory. And so um, identifying early can be helpful because then you're able to process, talk through, reflect about that experience. And for some individuals, when you learn different tools and coping mechanisms, they can actually take traumatic experiences and really reframe that positively in the context of their life and we call that post-traumatic 
growth. And so wow. that's an important factor to realize there's hope, thing, bad things happen yeah. to individuals, whether it's war, sexual trauma, um, you know, tr troubling experience, all kinds of them, and, but that there is hope that you can get help and that much of this is very treatable and can um, be addressed uh, yeah. with the right amount of help. I do, I do like that post-traumatic um, growth. Yeah. I mean, that's huge, that's yeah. huge, and that's hopeful for anybody that's watching. Um, doctor, if folks are interested in reaching out to you, yeah. where can they where can they find you and learn more? Yeah, so the Harris Center for Mental Health and IDD is a resource for this entire county. Um, if folks are interested in learning more about trauma or anything else related to mental health, you can give our um, call line a ring, and we can have many people People that um, can help support you. Our phone number is 713-970-7000. So anybody who's interested, reach out. We're here to help. And that is also a 24-hour crisis yep. hotline. All yep. right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, doctor, for such an important conversation. Happy to be here. Thank you.